Jacqueline Sable. Welcome back to our weekly edition of Q&A with Coach Schumann. I'm sure it will be interesting as always. We've got a bunch of questions for Dave today, so let's get started. Dave, you have guided more than 50,000 high school athletes from all walks of life, from big cities to small towns, 6 foot 5, 300 pound linemen to 5 foot 5, 140 pound running backs. Having seen so many different players from various backgrounds, what is the most common mistake athletes make in their recruiting process? Uh, one of the most common mistakes that athletes make, number one, uh, is that they don't get themselves involved in the recruiting process as early as possible, meaning they don't market themselves, they don't get their name out there, they think that it's just magically going to happen, uh, that their coach may just recommend them and, and that they're going to get recruited. Recruiting doesn't happen by magic, they have to actually go out there put their name out there, get to events, get their video out there as many college coaches as possible to, to optimize uh, the things from their recruiting process standpoint. Um, one of the other mistakes uh, that athletes make is they're not prepared uh, for the recruiting process, meaning they haven't evaluated the colleges that would be the best fit for them, uh, number one. And number two, they haven't taken the steps both academically um, and requirement-wise for college to find out what they have to do to qualify for a college scholarship as well as to be able to get themselves in a position to be recruited uh, from an academic standpoint. At the National Underclassmen Combine, you run events all around the country. I'm sure you've seen certain athletes who didn't think they were good enough to play at the next level for a number of reasons, but following the Combine, they generated interest. How important do you think it is for kids to attend recruiting combines? Uh, recruiting combines have become one of the most important steps uh, in the recruiting process. It's important for the athletes to get verifiable information um, on their stats for 40 yard dash, uh, shuttle run, all the testing areas, as well as how they compete against other kids uh, from other areas throughout the United States so they can see where they fall uh, from an athletic standpoint and so they can get evaluated uh, for the college coach to see where they fit among other players from around the country. So recruiting combines have now become one of the necessary uh, parts within the recruiting process. What are some of the most common mistakes athletes make when attempting to publicize themselves or contact college representatives? Well, that's a very important question. Uh, one of the things that athletes uh, do that's a huge mistake is they misrepresent themselves. So they might mis misrepresent their height, their weight, uh, their 40 yard dash, um, and they might think that by telling the college coaches uh, these kind of like small white lies um, that it's a situation where it's not going to hurt them from a recruiting standpoint but they don't realize that the college coaches go and use every available resource to find that information on the athletes as well as they will go uh, contact the high school coach they're going to get information from recruiting combines so there's no such thing anymore of uh, being able to kind of misrepresent yourselves a lot of athletes misrepresent uh, what their skill sets are what their 40 yard dash time is when it all comes out anyway in a recruiting combine. Uh, and the other thing that athletes will misrepresent themselves on uh, is where they stand from an academic standpoint. Uh, they have to make sure they get their transcript in a college coach's hands as early as possible. Withholding that, all that means to the college coach is that they assume that academically they're not going to be somebody uh, that is going to qualify. Um, so that's another thing that, that from an athletic standpoint, um, athletes make the mistake on doing it. And the last thing they make the biggest mistake is on who's recruiting them. Athletes will think by saying, uh, you know, Texas is recruiting me or USC is recruiting me, all these schools are recruiting me, that that's going to have another school that they're talking to want them. The most important thing is to give them the accurate information as to what's going on in the recruiting process because college coaches talk to each other, okay, when they get information. They talk to high school coaches and they talk to recruiting services to get the information they need. So they want to make sure they represent themselves honestly and properly. And what are some of the most important do's and don'ts in recruiting? Can you give me a list of do's and don'ts? Do, uh, make sure you're prepared for events that you go to. Do, make sure you listen to everything your high school coach asks you to do because ultimately he's going to make sure, he's going to be the one that is, is for you or against you in the recruiting process. So you want to make sure you follow everything that your, your coach uh, says. Do make sure that you are at all times the best player in the field and the hardest working player in the field because again, the college coaches are going to get your highlight tape which might uh, wet their palate and get them interested in you. But ultimately, when they get their game film, if you're working hard and you're playing the whole entire game 100 miles an hour, that's going to reflect um, when the college coaches see your film. So you got to make sure that you're going hard 100% at all times. Do make sure that you're doing the best you can academically, okay? 
uh, do make sure that you're a leader and someone that uh, other players follow and, and, and that represents himself properly. Uh, do make sure you know how to handle yourself socially uh, because when you go to college you're going to be on your own and the more you can practice that now the better off you're going to be and do become independent. When you go to college nobody's going to be uh, forcing you to wake up. If you don't wake up on time and you don't get to practice on time you're going to be on the first bus home. So you want to make sure that you start becoming independent now, setting your own alarm, making sure that you're practice on time, making sure that you're there early, making sure that you're doing all the things that your coach wants you uh, in order to be the best football player that you can. Uh, your athletic ability and how well you play, you do all those things, that will be reflected on the field. Some don'ts, some very important don'ts. Number one, don't ever, ever burn bridges. Okay, for example, uh, I've had this happen and a lot of times it's parents, but it's athletes as well. Uh, parent doesn't like the time maybe they had a 40 yard uh, dash in the event. Uh, parent doesn't like that he hasn't gotten a, rec uh, a rival's recruiting profile. Uh, parent doesn't like that he didn't get invited to the Ultimate 100 camp. N numerous different reasons. They'll write nasty emails or berating emails saying, you know, uh, your program isn't good or, or this program stinks. Well, we talk to college coaches all the time. We get the information out to college coaches all, all the time. And when they ask us about specific players, which they will, if they're recruiting somebody and there's someone that we, we feel can be a problem, we're going to tell them that. Because ultimately our relationship with the college coach is making sure they get the information they need is important. So if you represent yourself in a fashion that is not going to be good to us or to a college coach, they're going to assume that you're not going to be the right person for their program. And some of the things that, that athletes and parents see on TV is not the reality of the situation. There are thousands and thousands of athletes competing for a scholarship percentage of 1% that go on to play uh, Division 1A, 1AA on scholarship. So if you're not able to handle yourself the right way, they want someone that's going to be there for four or five years that's going to be contributing to their program. You must conduct yourself properly at all times. Do not burn bridges and make sure that at all times you're positive within the recruiting process no matter who you're dealing with. What is the most interesting approach you remember an athlete taking with the hopes of getting recruited? I remember reading about an athlete who hitchhiked from Canada to Detroit. Um, there's an athlete from Canada that wanted to be involved in the event so bad and get recruited uh, and come to uh, one of the events in America that he hitchhiked all the way, I don't remember how many miles it was, but it was supposedly like, it was like on a nine hour trek in order to get to, to our event in Detroit. Um, that's obviously a very, very, very unique story. But we've had athletes that have gone to five, six events uh, just so they can continue to in, in, improve their scores. Um, there's a kid from Virginia that uh, is one of the top freshman running backs um, in Virginia. He wanted to compete against players in Texas, and he'd heard so much about how good football is in Texas that him and his family flew to our, to our Texas, Dallas, Texas event to compete against Texas athletes to see if he could, you know, was on par with those players, which he was. But those kind of unique things happen all the time because the recruiting process is such that athletes now are, are, are more aware of the opportunities that are available to them, and so are parents. So they want to get themselves against the best competition so they can show what they can do. When you were starring at Saddlebrook High School in the 90s, recruiting was far different. The internet obviously wasn't nearly as big, sites like Rivals weren't nearly as popular as it is now. Explain the specifics of getting recruited now versus then. Well, first of all, recruiting was as big as it was now. It's just different. Uh, there was no Rivals.com, there was no internet, uh, there were no cell phones. Everybody used the landline in order to call people. So it was very, very different. There was no email. There was no text messaging. So the recruiting process was vastly different back then. Basically back then you sent in your highlight tape or your game film and with your information. You hope the, the college coaches will, will recruit you or you contacted them uh, via phone to get them to, to recruit you. Now there are so many different avenues to get information on the athlete. That's really where it's changed. The information age with internet technology and, and the web, um, with text messaging, we know the NCAA's outlaw text messaging, but now you got Facebook and you got uh, social media, you've got all these different avenues that the athletes can get their information out there, as well as the college coaches from a recruiting standpoint can get their information out there. So it's this like mass amount of information and a couple things that come out of it. Number one, there's so much information out there 
that it makes it more difficult for the college coaches to decipher what is what. So they need more verifiable resources from that standpoint, which we happen to be one of those verifiable resources. Um, and, and number two, the athlete, the family, it's so on them to market themselves uh, to the college coaches and to market them as, themselves as much as possible that they, ha they have to make sure that they get as much reach as possible out there in order to improve um, the ability to get recruited. And really because there's so much information out there, they have to work even harder. Naturally, every athlete wants to play for a school like Texas, USC, Florida, Alabama, and so on. How can a coach help an athlete to understand that maybe they have a better fit at a different school without hurting his confidence? Uh, it's important for an athlete to find the right fit for them from, a, from an academic and athletic standpoint. And it's also very important for the coach to make sure that they set uh, expectations as to where an athlete might fit. And one of the things is that I always tell athletes, you, you want to reach for the stars, okay, and you want to try and shoot for, for the highest level that you can possibly play at, but um, you also have to understand the recruiting process and what's going on. So you need to find schools that fit what your skill sets are, okay? And it's a very, very tough thing for an athlete who dreams of playing at Texas or Alabama for them to understand that, hey, you might be a better fit at this Division II school or this Division III school, but it's important to help set their expectations so they understand what's going on in the recruiting process. And, and one of the things we say is, listen, if you get your information out there, you go to a, a combine, you go to uh, your coach, get your game film out there, you send it out to the top tier schools, and nobody's really interested, no one's you know, set, starting to send you information on it, um, then you might want to start setting your expectations to a Division II or Division III school because ultimately you want to find the right place that you can play, number one, uh, and, and number two, also obviously the right place that you'll do a good job academically. Dave, thanks for your time. Is there any advice or message you'd like to send in closing to all the recruits watching this interview? Yeah. Uh, from a message standpoint, the athletes need to understand a couple things. Number one, you must work as hard as you possibly can in order to make it to the next level. A lot of times athletes think that, oh, I'm talented on my high school football team, I'm the best player on my team, I'm going to Division I school. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Guys, there's thousands and thousands of high school that are playing uh, high school football, and everybody has the best player on their team. You have to be more than just the best player on your team. You have to be best player in your state, the best player uh, in your region in order to be somebody that can be a college level player. And it's important to understand that getting to be a college level player requires tremendous hard work, both academically, socially, athletically, and you have to be the best at all times. Anything less than that um, is going to set yourself short. And if you somehow do make it to the next level and you haven't prepared yourself by working hard, and, and listen to the coach that, that, that's instructing you throughout high school and, and putting everything you have into uh, working out, into lifting, into football, into academics, you're going to be in for a rude awakening when you go to college. And there's a ton of guys that end up going to college that come back one year later, uh, leave school because they did not prepare themselves for college. It's important to prepare yourself to be at the next level. You must act as if you're already at the next level.